This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Guys, Three Sides fans, we are here with the one, the one and only Slim Jim Phantom from the Stray Cats. He's got an incredible book out um, called My Life as a Rockabilly Rebel, a Stray Cat Struts. Um, and he's here at the Spooky Empire, and uh, we're going to talk some rock and roll here now. Um, being I'm more of a hard rock metal guy, you did something, and I'm a fellow drummer, I've been playing drums for about 40 years, but you did something I'm envious of. I'm a big... Made a motor- living at it? Yes, yeah, well, number one, <laughs> yeah, amen, brother. Made a few bucks off of it. But uh, number two, you, you played with Lemmy. Yeah. Legendary. Yeah. Wow, tell me well, about... Well, Lemmy's a rock and roller, you know. Oh, boy, oh, I didn't... Boy. I didn't go to Hard Rock. Lemmy was already at Rockabilly. You yes, know, he like was. That, yeah, I, that's um, what I wanted you, you to. People, everyone talks about Lemmy as the metal guy and everything. What did he love most? He loved his fifties rock. And he roll. loved Buddy Holly. Oh, um, exactly. And Little Richard and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and Gene Vincent and Chuck Berry and that's what. And Lemmy was. Really um, think about a lot of those. He's just Chuck Berry on freaking steroids. I mean. Yeah. Well, you don't go straight to. Uh, Black Sabbath or Led Zeppelin or Motorhead or or the Rolling Stones or whoever you want to talk about no one went straight there exactly. you have to go through a certain path in order to to arrive there and Ozzy Lemmy Robert Plant Keith Richards, they would be the first guys to tell you this mm-hmm. you know uh, um, it's not really a secret or anything that anyone doesn't want anyone to know it's like that's where it comes from and Lemmy I met very very early on maybe date myself like 40 years ago um, uh, in London and he came to one of the very very early Stray Cats shows and um, he he had heard it was an American band in London doing it upright kind of thing so he came to see us and you know I met him and we hung out after night in the clubs He's, he wanted to hear a certain Gene Vincent song and I didn't know the song wow. and he was like mad at me <laughs> what kind of rockabilly are you I said I I don't know, man. You know, and we went back to his house. He had this little flat, and he went through all of his stuff, and he had a reel-to-reel that he had recorded off the radio himself from like the fifties, wow. and he wanted me to hear this one song. And you know, he's a rock and roll. Well, as being a rock and, rock and roller, I, I tell you, as, as growing up, I was a big metalhead, loved rock and. But it was just funny. There was two bands I used to say got a pass. Stray Cats and the Police, with all my metalhead fans, and yeah, every positive all my all my friends. It was like those are two bands that okay, they're they're we're at the party, we're rocking and rolling. Stray Cats, man, yeah. throw it on. Well, that's it good just to hear. Had that great feel, you know. Yeah, because you can argue over like certain t- kinds of rock or certain kind of, but everyone can agree on Eddie Cochran kind mm, of exactly. as being the you know the first big rock star who had a guitar and Something sang else, those, baby. You know, that it 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 all comes from that there's really it doesn't get to Ozzy you know unless there's Eddie Cochran and he's happy to tell you mm-hmm. Spe- see Ozzy or Robert Plant ask them and that's what they want to talk about you know so we um, kind of unknowingly we just were kids in New York and we loved this music and we wanted to just do it and walk around dressed like that that's what we that was us we just that was our life yeah, that's and, um, what, that was, it was and authentic. didn't even really know and this other stuff I found out afterwards you know well, that um, it you know really is the you know, cradle of the whole thing you know well and I was in high school at the time and, and you guys just exploded on the yeah scene. and what I always thought was so interesting is I grew up with older brothers and sisters who right. had a lot of those 50s albums so I listened to Eddie Cochran and Elvis and, and yeah. Little Richard and all that so yeah. I would read a review saying they've created did a new genre. I'm like, <laughs> no, they didn't. Well, we furthered a genre. Yeah. I think we were kind of probably louder and a little faster than uh, uh, like you a little. You took it to a different level. Yeah, like a little different for yeah, sure. But, but like that, that was the cool. inspiration for it, yeah. positively. You know. Um, uh, so for a lot of kids, that's how how I first found out about it was through I had older cousins who were into the um, you know the Stones, Zeppelin, Clapton. I remember was a big one. Uh, uh, Reading the you know the Beatles of course just reading album sleeves I'm like 
drummer guy who wants to see what kind of cymbal someone was playing on a I album. Did so I did, so I did. that's how you get exposed. Who's C. Perkins? You know, yeah. You know, that's Ringo's yeah. song. Singing yeah. a song. C. Perkins, who's that? Find that out. You, you look at Blind Faith. Who's B. Holly? You know, well, all right. But it, and so I had older cousins had those records, and I did my research, and this is all coming together at the same time. You find Chuck Berry from the Rolling Stones. You find... Um, Buddy Holly from, you know, Linda Ronstadt had a couple of big hits in the, when I was a kid in school. Through people like that, I like this song. What is, what, what is this? Uh, you know, Ian Clapton from Bi uh, uh, Blind Faith was Buddy Holly. Just find out about this stuff through the records that my older cousins had. So. Well, one of the things that you just said is one of the things that's changed. Because when we were growing up too, you would sit for an hours and hours looking at the sleeves and reading all the credits and yeah. figuring out who everyone was. And now it's like that's kind of disappeared to a certain degree. Kids don't seem to do that anymore. Not to a certain degree. It's all. gone. Yeah. I mean, it's not for everyone. It's not a rule or anything. Like, if you like rock and roll, you don't have to know what type of sticks Ringo used. Like, see, I, I, that was just me that I liked it. I was that guy. But, I mean, I understand. These kids want something more immediate. They don't want to have to go to school to like music. I, I mean, I, you know, I get it. It's just, again, it's the great thing about music. You take something, you, you know, you can like Frankenstein. You don't have to know who the makeup artist was unless you want to, you know. So, it's, you just take from it what you want, you know. Like, I'm, like, happy to... You know, provide it. If you want to carve it up, then that's fine. If you just want to like it and dance it, then that's fine too. So, you know, it's all, it's all good, really. Either way, your toes are still tapping. Exactly yeah. right. So, are you guys going to do any more Stray Cat stuff moving forward? Or? Yeah, we have a show. Um, we start next week. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Vegas, April the 21st. Um, Chicago, 4th of July. Big one in LA, um, August. So, hopefully, more will get filled in. But yeah, it's. Definitely back in a big way. Yeah, because I live in Minneapolis. I mean, other right. living there now. Yeah, he's been there a long time. Yeah. He's around the social scene every once in a while. Yeah. We'll bring that uh, the orchestra through. Yeah, to really good. Yeah. You know, and I'm glad to hear that you guys are going to be doing some shows. Yeah, we've always stayed close and you know kept the music and every Have few you guys years it all works out. And talked we, about new music. Uh, once in a while, yeah. You know, we'll see. Are you someone that would record if you could, if, if, if the right situation came along? Sure, I'm the drummer. I'm just, you know, I say yes to everything. I'm here spooking right. the fire. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing the Stray Cats. I'm, I'm going somewhere after this. I, I, like, do everything. Did Play you, with Lammy, and then we'll run over and have dinner with the... Uh, did you ever... Did you sit in the studio, or did you stand as well? Um, in the studio with the Stray Cats, I... Uh, on maybe... I mean, I learned how to play the drums when I was a kid, so you sit I, down... To this and day, I don't know how you do that. Um, yeah, that's why it's how a... How in the fuck do you stand and play the whole set? You gotta be fit. I'm not. <laughs> uh, you would be. Um, um, uh, I, I like learning in the traditional way. Because fucking balance. I you gotta mean, stand up straight for a start. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> this guy's killing uh, me. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I learned how to play drums, you know, took lessons and sat down and learned how to read music and, all the, you know, the whole thing, the Straight Cats, we but that's found wonder, rockabilly. When, and did you, when did you say, you know what, I'm going to be a stand-up drummer? Because you, you couldn't have had that many influences. No, the earliest influence was Dickie Harrell from um, Gene Vincent and the Blue Caps, Bebop Alula, and uh, again, you were... Little album sleeve photographs with a magnifying glass, trying to find out, and we we saw some photos of him standing, and like years later, I'd met him, and he had a little bit of a chuckle and said, "Well, I only did it in photographs, and once in a while, I stood." He didn't do the whole show that way, you know. So and you did, yeah. Well, we had a concept for doing something different, you know. We wanted to do something completely different, and no one had ever put the drums in the front of the stage, and no one like we wanted to just a lot. It just we had a few ideas, and again, it was. We played a lot before anyone saw us on MTV, whatever, before we made a record. We played a year and a half, four sets a night, five nights a week around New York so we could experiment with stuff. And, you know, we were ready for it. By the time we got a little exposure, we had the act, oh, the Stray Cats, we, we, we had done it a lot. So, so we were good at it. I mean, know? even going back to the clubs, um, I can't remember, uh, your bass player's name. Sleep. Sleep. Playing the stand-up. How did, mm. I mean, did they have miking ish I mean, I'm talking when you first yeah, started out be, in clubs, man. Because, because there was no way. Now they have it so it's got electric bass pickups, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like melded with a, um, a pickups under the fretboard so you can get yep. the slap sound. Like Now it's a whole science. So when we did it, we were inventing it as we went along. That's, so um, I've, I've, Yeah, he's very responsible. That's a good question because he's very responsible for like... A rockabilly group now can go and you can buy a bass like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still have to practice it and get good and find some other guys who want to do it with you, but it's a little bit. Um, he was um, 
uh, uh, you know, he was inventing it as we went along. Was it, so he was building custom bases to solve yeah. those problems. Well, yeah. here's the thing. I mean, and not only just being a, a, a kiss geek, I'm a music geek. And I remember in my head going, okay, they weren't always the stray cats. You start off. There's no way you're taking a fucking stand-up bass and the and the club is just going to go, fuck you, how do we mic that? Or whatever. Well, there were clubs we didn't play in clubs that had sound men. We didn't know ourselves. <laughs> um, um, so that was an issue because we did everything ourselves back then. Um, stand-up bass, how they did in the 50s on all those records, and that's why it sounds good. It's an acoustic instrument. Mm -hmm. They would just put a bass uh, a mic in front of it. And the bass player had to stand still and in play. But, but that's so the whole then thing. it sounded good. Though. But Lee like in a live thing nuts, or, you know, running around a little bit, it's kind of, um, you have to have it properly amplified. If you hear some old Elvis records, when the bass player, Bill Black, who was one of our heroes, starts to go crazy, the bass drops out because he moved it away from the microphone mm -hmm. on a lot of those old, you know, so if you wanted to record or get it, you wanted the bass to come through, you had to stand by the mic. Were you ever able to play with uh, some of your heroes at all? Yeah. Um, who, like, who are some of the people you've, you've jammed with uh, over the um, years? I did a lot of work with Carl Perkins, you know, quite a lot of work with him. Uh, was always, you know, with Carl Perkins in the same sessions, we played with George Harrison and Eric Clapton and, you know. Wow. You know, that was a big one. And was like, I stayed like close. Well, it was George Harrison and Eric Clapton. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, You're Carl Perkins. You're a New York kid, and, man. That, you know, had been, that had to feel Yeah, and like they good. wanted me to, because I was that guy, you know. That's where their roots are again. You know, George Harrison, he didn't want to talk about Sergeant Pepper. He wanted to talk about Carl Perkins, you know. And if you meet Robert Plant, he doesn't want to talk about Stairway to Heaven. He wants to talk about Gene Vincent, well, and that's the, that's the, you know, unknowingly, when we were kids, that's what we tapped into, you know, and um, that's the thing that those guys love. As, mm -hmm. as someone who's, all, again, I'm a big Led Zeppelin geek and collect yeah. tons of bootlegs, you go back to some of those shows in the early 70s, you know what they encored with? A bunch of 50s tunes. Sure. That's that's what, yeah. if, if you want to go, and matter of fact, a lot of those, a lot of those things are on YouTube that you can find, but you're exactly right. Those great metal gods, if you whatever you want to call them, they cut their teeth on Gene Vincent and well, that's what they Eddie, like. That's I mean, if you want to get a selfie, you see Robert Plant at an airport. Don't ask him about Stairway to Heaven. Ask him about Bebopalula, and you'll get your selfie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my advice to everyone out there. Because that's what they grew up on. That's yeah, they didn't sense. just invent Stairway to Heaven out of nowhere, or Black Dog just didn't pop out one day. It's like, you know. It has to go through the right channels. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. It's like, for us, growing up with all this different type of music, we always talk about that because so many people always seem to be so locked into one kind of music. It's like, no, you got to keep your mind open to well, a lot of different Yeah, I mean, if, if that's what you want. I mean, it's fun, I think, part of the process. I mean, if that's how we got there. I mean, I like the Rolling Stones. Who are the Rolling Stones like? Okay, who do the guy, who, and then you find, who did Buddy Holly like? I mean, if for me, it's part of the process, you know? I like baseball. I want to know who the you know shortstop was in the 27 Yankees. I'm that guy. So, but, but like, you don't have to be. I mean, if you just want to like Led Zeppelin, then that's fine. But if you want to, I think it's fun to find out who Robert I, there's, there's, that's Page how I liked, have, you know? Uh, you know, uh, Robert Johnson records and stuff, yeah. because I kept reading about how Jimmy exactly. Page liked it, and I'm exactly. like, well, what if he that, I liked it, it had to, if he liked it, it had to be cool, yeah. so I'm going to check this out. Exactly, exactly right. And it's funny, too, because you can, uh, there's so many examples of it, like when people hear the, the riff from Tush by ZZ Top, I'm like, that's just an old fucking bluser. They didn't write that. You know, all that no, but stuff. but they put their stamp on it and yeah, they just they further just, correct. They just took a few along. grapes from here, a few grapes from here, made their own wine. But that, damn it, then, then, you know, all that's that. Those are just old blues. Riffs. Yeah. Go, go back and and and, and uh, you know, listen to the blues greats. I mean, they're Christ Almighty. Uh, you know, uh, oh crap, uh, da, 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 uh, the guy did. God, I'm having a fucking brain fart. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You're not gonna have this you, part on the you, TV, you, are you? you? Yeah, you, we. You, you, you got to give us a little more, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I lost made my my train of thought derailed. He's getting hungry. Yeah. Must see TV, folks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, we really appreciate you taking a couple. Oh, of you guys are awesome. It's, it's good. One, one more, one more plug. Are you yes. are you selling these now? Yes. Um, because I want to buy one. Like, you gotta now. be right over there. Yeah, so go out and get his new book. Yes. Book yes. It's Cat in your local bookseller, Amazon, Straight Cat Strut, St. Martin's Press. 
I'd and love this to see here. play at the Surf Ballroom. You got it. That would be fantastic. Clear Lake, Iowa. Yeah. Awesome. Right, cool. Thank right, you thanks. for coming by. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin.